speak very much, but when he talked and listened, I can remember when I was telling him how good I was, how bad I'm the best when I was about 18 years old. He said, son, when you're as good as you are, you can tell everybody. When you get really good, son, they'll tell you. The sage words of a father, a son's desire to please. That was the essence of Ken Venturi's childhood. A lifetime of paternal persuasion gave him the inner drive that carried him through hardship prior to the 1964 U.S. Open. A championship he almost didn't even play in. I was thinking of giving up, and I go back again to what my father said. He said, son, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. Anybody can give up. It takes no talent. Talent was something Ken Venturi was reacquainted with during the first two rounds in 64. He was tied for fifth with a chance to realize a lifelong dream. But the final day was a grueling 36 holes and temperatures that would soar above the century mark. I came out of the clubhouse and I knew it was going to be a very warm day. And uh, was on after hitting golf balls on the range, we went to the putting green. I was putting with Tony Lima. And uh, I said, it's going to be a hot one. He said, it sure is. And I said, good luck today, Tony. And he said, uh, good luck to you, Ken. He said, uh, I got a feeling it's going to be your day. I said, I hope so. And that's where we parted. And I went to the first tee with Ray Floyd. It was 108 degrees. The humidity was in the middle 90s. And uh, I was in awe of playing in a U.S. Open. It was my first one. And I'm paired with Ken. And I went out in 30. I went 3-3-4, 3-3-4, 3-3-4, three, three, four, three, three, four, three, three, four, shot 30. His hot play emulated the insufferable summer heat, but he wasn't able to outlast its side effects. His first bogey at 17 started a traumatic trek to the finish. And then when I got to 18, I had about a three-footer for 65, and I missed that one. That's when they sort of pictured me putting my hands up to my face. Uh, I didn't know where I was. I, I, I didn't even really know what much what I shot at that time. Regardless, the thought of succumbing to the elements was never a question. The words of a father, never more apparent. Son, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. Anybody can give up. It takes no doubt. Dr. Everett, he recommended that I didn't go out. And after the slump that I've had for couple years I said it I have no other place to go it's better than the way I've been living I said to him his mummy like strides somehow carried him on along with an unlikely newfound mental approach it was probably a blessing in disguise because I let what talent I had come out there was no nerves it was just could I finish and I wasn't thinking of penalties I wasn't thinking of rewards I was just thinking T green T green let's get out of here Virtually incoherent, he carried on. His perseverance rewarded when he took the lead at the turn. A lead that would grow larger as his competitors fell victim to their surroundings. All he had to do was survive the challenge of the final hole. I knew it was down the middle because the marshal came out on the tee and put both hands up in the air. It was like I just kicked the field goal. And I couldn't see the green end because you come out and then you start over the hill. As I came over the hill, the applause began. was was where I I guess I guess I felt that it was destiny because I didn't hit the putt correctly it wasn't supposed to go in and then I turned and I raised my arms and said my god I won the open his childhood dream had come true but was it enough to finally achieve the admiration of his father my father never told me I was any good because of my background. Again, he always made me work hard. And no matter what I won, he was, there's more to win. And my mother was congratulating me, but my father said, well, now, son, you got to prove it's not a fluke. Prove to them you can do it again. Next day, I'm back out practicing again. My father never told me I was any good until I was going back to have the operation on my hands. And uh, I told my father, uh, the doctor said I may lose these three fingers. And I was looking for some, something to pump me up. And I, when I thought about it and I told my dad, my dad said to me, it doesn't make any difference if you ever play golf again. He said, how can you say that, dad? 
Last word he said, because you were the best I ever saw. Went to the doctor, I said, Doc, do what you have to do. Yeah, my father told me I was good. And that made my day.